Sorry for being so late. I know you have been waiting for quite a long time, but uh, the debate has been long and I have to say very much interesting and useful. But I have to start by, th by thanking our Ukrainian host, in particular to you, Lia Dimitro, and certainly President Zelensky for your very good hospitality. Today we have had an informal meeting of the European Union foreign ministers in Kyiv. This is uh, for sure a historical date for several reasons. It is the first time ever that the Council met outside the European Union. It is the first time that we met in a candidate country. And unfortunately, it, is also, it was also the first time that the foreign ministers of the European Union meet in a country at war. Of course, we would like very much, we have preferred very much to meet under different circumstances. But these circumstances are the way they are, and we have to support Ukraine in facing this challenge. By coming to Kyiv, the European Union foreign ministers sent a strong message of solidarity and support to Ukraine in the face of this uh, unjust and illegitimate war. I personally, before today's meeting, I visited Odessa and Kyiv to meet with the Ukrainian people, know and discuss their daily life, and see with my own eyes the brutal, inhumane nature of Putin's aggression against this country. Targeting churches, cultural heritage, ports that are exporting food for hungry people around the world. This says a lot about the true face of the so-called special military operation that Putin is waging against the people of Ukraine, which is resisting with an incredible bravery. Russia is weaponizing hunger and energy. Russia is in doing so extending its crime across the globe, targeting the most vulnerable people in Africa and in Asia, depriving them from their food. This is the consequences of this, block of, this Navy blockage. And this is not only our claim, it's also the perception of many, as we have seen, at the heart of the United Nations General Assembly two weeks ago. Unhappily, Russia seems determined to continue its illegal actions, violating international rules and base order and putting global diplomacy to the test. This means that we have to work more together. And we have started doing that, but well, not started because we have been doing that for months. But today's discussion has provided us with a better idea of the security dimension of this situation. This has been a central discussion today with President Zelensky and with Minister Kuleba. We have been talking about the security commitments that we want to provide to Ukraine showing our determination to stand by Ukraine in the long term to deter acts of aggression and resist the destabilization efforts by Russia. As you can imagine, there are many different aspects on the, our sustained uh, engagement. Let me start by the military side. I propose a new bilateral multi-annual envelope on the European Peace Facility of uh, up to 5 billion for the next year, year in singular, more will come, and I hope that we can reach an agreement before the end of the year when we have to agree, member states have to agree on the, multi um, the review of the multi-annual financial framework. We continue training Ukrainian soldiers. The target today is to train 40,000 
in the coming months. And this includes specialized training, training for fighter jets pilots. We are also working on the, the strengthening the cooperation between European and Ukrainian defense industries. You had an important meeting here in Kiev a few days ago. And we will continue working in increasing resilience, cyber defense, and defense against hybrid threats such as disinformation and developing a common strategic communication. It's very important to increase our support on demining. This is a key condition for Ukraine's economic recovery and reconstruction. We are also discussing about further promoting comprehensive reform of the law enforcement sector, accountability and resilience, mainly via the strengthening of the existing European Union advisory mission that they had the opportunity to visit in Odessa. And for sure, the strongest security commitments that we can give to Ukraine is European Union membership. This is the strongest security commitment for Ukraine. Now Ukraine is a candidate country and he is going further on this way. We talk about war, military efforts, resilience, cyber attacks, but we talk also about peace. And we have to engage both on looking for peace and the reforms needed for the adhesion process. By the end of the year, the European Union Council will receive the report of the Commission on the enlargement package that will be presented together with myself and Commissioner Varelli. Another important issue is the continuous work on accountability, including the crime of aggression and humane, inhumane actions, such as the deportation of children. Russia has to pay for these aggressions and for all its crimes. We will now take forward on work on this point in close consultation with Ukraine. And as I said before, together with the adhesion process, there is the peace formula. We took note that the Zelensky's president peace formula is the only peace initiative discussed in the international community. Others were mentioned, but they have uh, disappeared. The only one that remains, the only one that attracts the attention and the work of the international community is President Zelensky's peace formula. It is, we uh, can say, the only game in town. It is the formula. And we will continue working as European Union to make it more global and the basis for the future peace. And I am going to hand uh, over to you, Dimitro, but before that, let me underline that this joint meeting of the European Union Foreign Ministers with Ukraine in Kyiv should be understood as a clear commitment of the European Union to Ukraine and its continued support in all dimensions to support military, to support for peace, for a just peace, accountability, and working for the membership path. And it's also sending a strong signal to Russia. A strong signal to Russia. We are not intimidated by your missiles or drones. Just after I left Odessa, a new rain of drones fall in the oblast of uh, Odessa just some minutes after I left the city. We are not intimidated by your drones or missiles. Our resolve to support the fight of freedom and independence of Ukraine is firm and will continue. Yes, we will continue standing for Ukraine. Thank you.
Насамперед хочу подякувати високому представнику Європейського Союзу, всім моїм колегам і друзям-міністрам.